Hi friends, I'm Adrian File. And I'm John File. And welcome to the Love the Process Podcast. We've been married 16 years, 15 good ones, and have four awesome kids. My career has centered around process improvement and leadership development. And I've been an entrepreneur since I was four, and I'm currently an owner and CEO of an insurance company and corporate training team. We are working to become better versions of ourselves every day, and we invite you to join us as we share our journey and the lessons we have learned. Life, business, figuring out how to love the process to becoming great. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Hey friends, we are glad to be back. Another episode, and we are so excited because we have a guest with us today. We have Warren Maynard. Hey, it's good to be here. And uh, you said it two words let's go. <laughs> let's go. That's what I think of whenever I think about the File family is <laughs> let's go. And you guys definitely are always on the go. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> love it. I Everybody, love it. I love everybody's got to be somewhere. So. That's, right. <laughs> that's true. All right, Warren, so why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are and what you love? Yeah, I loved the introduction that you gave because I think it's when we think about who I am, it really is about I'm a son, I'm a brother, I'm a father, I'm a husband, I'm a leader. And that really just ties into what I do, which is serve as the executive director of an organization called Impact Players, which is focused on inspiring men to be great husbands, fathers, and leaders. And so for me, uh, I was in ministry for a long time. I was a pastor for over 25 years. And now I get this awesome opportunity to really take so many of the life lessons that I've learned, so many of the truths that I've received from, from God and from experience, and just to share that with men uh, all over the Puget Sound and now in the days ahead all over the country. That's awesome. How, so how did you get started with Impact Players? I was a guy. <laughs> I mean, I was a dude, yeah. and uh, it started. Impact started in 2006 by Matt Wimmer, who was a star baseball player at the University of Washington. Now he's a CEO at Sambica, but at the time he was, when he started, he was just a, a, a young dad, a new husband, getting started in his career, and uh, they had seen a friend, a mutual friend, uh, kind of fall apart. His life fell apart. His you know, career, everything fell apart. And they said, wow, what an impact one life can make either for positive or for negative. Mm. And they said, uh, him and a group of friends said, hey, let's start this organization called Impact Players and really focus on trying to change the impact from negative to positive by being proactive and really mm. helping equip guys to be great husbands, fathers, and leaders. So I stepped in around 2014 just looking for some encouragement, looking mm -hmm. for community, looking for some other men to mm -hmm. share life with. And I started coming to these breakfasts and boy, I was just so blessed by the camaraderie, mm -hmm. by the bacon, by <laughs> the, the, the encouragement to just really strive after these other goals when so much in our culture is about accomplishment and achievement in the classroom or in the boardroom and impact players is saying hey yeah those things are great but if you're not winning at home if you're not winning and thriving in the relationships that matter most then any success you have at work is going to feel compromised mm -hmm. and you're probably going to feel like you're not where you want to be mm. Totally. I've totally. never been so excited for a guest. <laughs> yeah. after that, after I that totally minute. align with Love the Process, right? I mean, it, it totally aligns <laughs> with what we do. And it's so important, the work that you're doing mm -hmm. and continuing to grow in this area. Now, it sounds like you're going to spread nationally. Um, Warren, when I first met with him and heard uh, this vision for Impact Players, I'm like, this is something we got to get behind. This is mm -hmm. something that's got to get energy from anybody who who means well upon their community upon their families i mean the mm -hmm. impact is such a great word and i and i think that's accurate you know the proactive nature love the process we mm -hmm. like to say you know if you stay ready you don't have to get ready we had to change sharpen the saw which is a stephen covey turn yeah in our training uh to stay ready mm -hmm. which we like actually better because training isn't something you did it's something you do Right. Right. And so what they continue to offer is opportunities for, for men specifically to to be trained, to be prepared to, to win at home yeah. first. Right? Yeah. And I mean, life is a process, right? Like yeah. we we're, we're always a work in progress and none of us have it all figured out. 
the way that we approach things as we talk to men is not, hey, here's the master teacher and everybody else is trying to, to learn from us. It's really, hey, we're all in this thing together. And we know that, that families are dynamic, mm-hmm. right? Like the moment that you think you've got it figured out with what to do with your two-year-old, <laughs> guess what? Now they're a three-year-old. <laughs> the moment you figure out what to do with your teenager, guess what? Now they're getting ready to go to college. And so we're always changing. Our families are always changing, which means that none of us really have this thing totally figured out. But we want to lean into the process, right? We want to engage in the conversation. We want to be around people who are wiser, who are more mature, and even those that are younger that are trying to, to apply the principles that we're talking about in a new world, in a new era than maybe it was when we were coming up. And so there's so much that we can learn from one another yeah. when we really lean in with humility. Well, I'd love to hear some yeah. of the principles yeah. that you guys focus on, but I also, like, what's the age range? What are we talking here? Yeah, that's what's so awesome about Impact Players is that it's for men because obviously we're trying to inspire men to be great husbands, fathers, and leaders. And I say it's for men Men are the ones that we work with, but really the wives and the children are the ones that get the greatest benefit Mm -hmm. when husbands and fathers are really leaning into their role in uh, a really effective way. Uh, But we have young men from 14 all the way up to 94 (laughs) that are involved in the program. That's awesome. And to have an intergenerational community of Mm -hmm. men is pretty unique Mm -hmm. because, you know, we, we've all worked, like I was a youth pastor for many years. And when you work with students, they turn 18 and then they're out. And then you wait for the next group of kids to come in and you have to start all over again. But with impact, we think that there's beauty, there's beauty in being able to track with guys for a long time, but also no matter where you are, there's always someone you can learn from. And there's always someone you can teach mm. and inspire. And yeah. that's what these groups are ab- you know, allowing us to do. Mm-hmm. Well, before he goes into the principles and, and, and kind of methodologies, I will tell you, I, uh, I have a decent bull crap detector. I see how I said that. <laughs> uh, decent. <laughs> and, and, and uh, you know, we don't go into the Bible much on this podcast, but I will. There's a verse that says, a good tree can't bear bad fruit, and a bad tree can't bear good fruit. You mm. will recognize them by their fruit. And I'll tell you, the impact players, the fruit, the tree that's growing yeah. uh, that I've seen over the last few years, under your leadership specifically, um, because that's the only context that I've seen, has been very, very good. And and mm. so when he's saying these things, um, this isn't a, it's not a pitch. Right. It's not. Yeah. And there's a lot of pitches out in the world right now that, right. that lack actual effect that actually move people and their families and, and then their communities and organizations forward. Warren, why I'm so excited to have him on here to talk about the principles that Adrian's at. And she's asking the same thing because she's going, right. I'm sure we can get John to do some more of these <laughs> things. OK, because I'm in, I, I don't have it all figured out by any stretch exactly. of imagination. Yeah. And and you have a great family. You know, mm-hmm. I look I, you got to vet the leader. And um, we, we, we become not the greatest fruit inspectors in mm-hmm. America uh, mm-hmm. as, a, as a unit. Um, I'm not saying it's because we don't want to do great things, but for some reason we struggle mm-hmm. to actually do that as a unit. Uh, maybe we have different ideas of what it should look like, mm-hmm. and so maybe we, that's why we don't or uh, whatnot. But anyway, I'm, I'm excited to hear your philosophies, your principles, um, mm. as Adrian asked. And, and I've seen them firsthand. Warren and I led a, a cohort together. I'm sure he might talk a little bit about yeah. it as well. And um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign up for, for this next season. I'm probably going to have to awesome. do some remote. I'm traveling, but uh, I'm excited for that and, and some of the things that are upcoming for you guys. So, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, as far as like, what are the principles? How do we, you know, how do we do what we do? Um, you know, first of all, I think one of the, the key things is authenticity and humility. Mm-hmm. And there's enough bluster out in the world today through social media, through LinkedIn. I mean, like I've never, I've never seen an unimpressive LinkedIn account. 
right? Like, <laughs> like, like if, if you know, whatever you do, you're the CEO or the engineer or the chief operating officer of something on LinkedIn. <laughs> right. And so, you know, that creates this kind of mindset that everywhere I go, I've got to try to live up to my own hype. Mm. And one of the things that has been so powerful with this culture of authenticity and humility is so many men who have come to me and they've said, Warren, I have what people often refer to as imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. You know, and they say, I, I walk into these meetings and I, I don't feel like I really belong here. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like I really live up to this image that I'm trying to put out. Yeah, that's on and LinkedIn. That's on LinkedIn, <laughs> right? Yeah. And so Instagram. we are yeah. trying to create safe spaces for men to come in and say, you know what? that LinkedIn or that social media, that Instagram, you know, I'm not, I'm, our family is not the, the, the picture of the, the dentistry family that you see when you walk into the dentist, you know, everybody's got beautiful yeah. smiles and, yeah. and looks at, you know, looks good and is in great shape, you know, but beyond that, beyond that veneer, Hey, we all are struggling with different things. Mm -hmm. And so, by creating that environment, that that authenticity, authenticity and humility, that opens the door for us to really talk about real life. Mm -hmm. And how do we make changes in our real life unless we're willing to be real about our lives? And so we, we start there, and then we build on a foundation of truth. Mm -hmm. One thing we like to say at Impact Players at our breakfast is we often referred to as uh, wise words from the past. That's another way of saying uh, we believe that the Bible has truth for our lives that are as relevant today as you could ever imagine. And so, like, I'll, I'll give you an example. There's a, there's a verse that I often refer to, and I call it the play. And so over the last few years, I've just learned to run the play. John, I know you're a sports guy. So am I. Um, yeah, just but run the route. Run, run the play. So yeah. what's yeah. what's the play? Plan the dive and plan, plan the dive the and dive the plan. There you, you go. See, Navy SEALs spoke a couple there of years you go. ago. Just plan the dive and dive the plan. That's great. So James 1, 19 and 20 says, brothers, know this. Let every one of you be quick to listen, mm. slow to speak, slow to anger. Mm. For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Mm. I can't tell you how like literally thousands mm. of times that I've run that play in my home mm. with my wife, with my kids, I've got two teenage kids. <laughs> Trust me. I need that play um, with overly opinionated people that I meet in person mm. or on social media. And so here you have this verse that was written 2000 years ago. And yet, it is like the most relevant thing and the most truthful thing in my life. Mm -hmm. And that's just one example. But we try to help men connect these ancient, uh, timeless principles from the scriptures mm -hmm. and say, this can actually change the way that you live your life. It can change your family. It can change your business. It can change the way that you engage with people that uh, come from totally different worldviews and perspectives than you. Yeah. And it's amazing. It like people run the play and they go, "Wow, that really worked." Yeah. I can't believe it. it so I love that. Here's what I'd tell you too that I think is is I'm listening to you and I'm translating my experience is I heard I heard this guy talk about we learn in rows and we grow in circles. And what you yeah. just said is we're not all up there. There's not some teaching that we're every one person's got it all figured out. And we're just mm -hmm. trying to be like that individual. But in real time. We grow in circles. So mm -hmm. when you, you're part of Impact Players or you're in a cohort or you go to, you know, that monthly breakfast, which is a packed house. I mean, yeah. standing room only. Yeah. The bacon is, is <laughs> yeah. but we never run out of bacon. Bacon is one of our core values. It's a staple. Okay? So, yeah. Is, is it, is it, there'll be, a, there'll be a teaching. Somebody will talk about their experience, right. something, you know, the speaker will come in. But there's always opportunity for in the circle at the table mm -hmm. that you're at to discuss the concepts. And, and and it's that's a powerful way to to to, to learn right mm -hmm. to grow and and in this authentic humble way of of we actually believe that you're mm -hmm. going to get more 
uh, from discussing these concepts than just taking a bunch of notes and leaving. Yeah. And thanks for the information, right? Right. Uh, that, it, that you actually grow. And that's what I think you consistently see over time when people are continually engaged in these cohorts mm -hmm. is, is then you also have real life examples of, I right. didn't run that play very well. And yeah. I can think of a couple in my life where I'm going, the Book of Jimmy. I call the, the book, book of James the book, the book of Jimmy, yeah. by the way. Yeah, I love <laughs> it. Yeah, yeah. If you know him you as well as I do. You and James are on <laughs> He goes by uh, Jimmy. Close terms. He yeah, goes by Jimmy. It. You know, consider it pure joy. The other trials and tribulations of many kinds, right? There you go. And, uh, so, yeah, and so, you know, I mean, I think, like. Pure joy. Like, we, live in this, <laughs> we live in this digital age, right? Like, we're doing a digital podcast. People yeah. are going to listen to this. Yeah. They're going to get great content from this. The, the introduction now of AI yeah. and what that's going to mean for the proliferation of information in our world today, um, the answers are out there. The, the information is out there. Uh, but what, what I think we realize, and you know, I think you guys see this as well, is that you need more than great content. And yeah. we've got world-class content. We've got incredible speakers. Yeah. Kalen DeBoer, head coach of the University of Washington, is going to be at our next breakfast. But we've Almost had it sold out. Right? It's all, yeah, it will be yeah, sold yeah, out yeah. in the next but before this yeah. podcast airs. Yeah, it'll be sold yeah, out. Yeah. Um, but you know, guys like Je Jeff Vanderstelt, mm -hmm. you know, uh, guys like you know, uh, the Wild Leaders, and so many others mm -hmm. that come in. They bring we've incredible. Had Rob, we've had Rob on the podcast. Rob, yeah, yeah, Rob and Dr. Rob and and so many others. Content is amazing. But yeah. we can find content in a lot of places. Yeah. But when you can pair content and conversation. That's good. That's where real transformation can take place. And a lot of guys are mm. listening to great content, but they have no place or no person to really process that with. So good. And so yeah. it's like it becomes like the, you know, the water off the duck's back. And I'm not a big fan of ducks, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, go dogs. Go but, dogs. <laughs> but the water off the ducks back that, you know, it's like, yeah, that that was great content. But because I haven't had any dialogue with anybody, it's it doesn't get digested. Yeah. It just gets, you know, uh, passed through. And so I think that's really an important component for, you know, whether it's love the process or impact players is, yeah. you know, I can give you the information. But unless you're able to process it and figure out how to apply it, it's not going to help you that much. Yeah. You know, John Wooden, he had the seven, basically his credo, seven points. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I'll just name one of them. Oh, make friendship of fine art was one of them, too. And, um, you know, be thankful. You talk about humility. Mm. Be thankful each day. But one of the seven was drink deeply of good books, mm. especially the Bible. Yeah. Drink and his dad gave it to him. Drink deeply of good books, especially the Bible. And so, when you talk about wise words from the past, mm. that's what that's who I thought of. I thought, you know, and, and John Wooden, if you remember, you know, I think it's Kareem Abdul Jabbar when he's 99, is, is walking him out, you know, and uh, he was a consummate teacher mm. and he never wavered from the wisdom. And the mm. truth. You said a foundation mm. of truth, right? Yeah. Like and and so this day right now we're in and this time we're in. How do you navigate? Um, there's a lot of ideas about what's true mm. right now. There's yeah. a lot of uh, there's a lot of ideas about what's true or what's not true. You know, we mm. were just watching. Remember last night we were watching uh, comics. And comedians, co comedians and cars, and cars giving. Oh giving yeah, coffee. Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah. Yeah. So Jerry, yeah. Jerry is the man. he's got foundations <laughs> of truth you yes. talk you listen to these guys talk with jerry and and he one was where he was with i'm not gonna say the actress's name but she was like you tipped how much he's like you know what's the first thing they're gonna say when they find out jerry and this gal who's probably worth 30 million dollars and jerry's worth about a billion okay she they're gonna say uh how much did they tip? Mm. You know? <laughs> she goes, mm. I could never be married to you. He's like, you're right. You couldn't because right. we, we get a tip. Like, yeah. that's ridiculous. He's like, think about it. So, but wow. Jerry has these, these ways of, of weaving truth with life. And so right. him and, and Jim, humor. Jim Carrey, mm -hmm. right. We're on together. And, and Jim's got some different ideas and it yeah. was very interesting to mm. watch the two of them converse and he's like, well, that's that. You're going to find out that's actually not true. And I'm thinking, huh. 
So there's people prominent in mm. Hollywood or prominent to mm. our to our culture, yeah. right? Who are um, who are putting these ideas out there as well. And yeah. and and I thought Jerry did a great job mm. handling some of mm. it. Yeah. Um, but if you watch, you get a chance to watch it. It's one of those. So my right. question is, how do you how do you cast a wide net? Which is, I assume, you want any and all men mm-hmm. from fourteen yeah. to ninety four or fourteen to one hundred to yeah. to come one, come all to the table, so that they can be transformed, for lack of a better term, through content and conversation mm-hmm. over time. Mm-hmm. How do you do that well in this day and age? Yeah, that's a great. And again, that's where I think that humility piece really comes in because if people perceive that you know you think that you're better than everybody else, that you're right. smarter than everybody else, then immediately they're on the defensive. What I love about that illustration that you gave with Jerry Seinfeld is that if that had happened on Twitter, it probably would have become sort of a Twitter war, right? Right. Because you're you know, you're you're just lobbing out bombs at one another. But when you can get mm. people of differing opinions and perspectives into a room to really talk with one another, to engage. You know that you love one another. There's a culture of respect. There's a culture of understanding. That's when beautiful things can really happen. Mm-hmm. You know, for many years, I was a part of an organization called Toastmasters, which is, mm-hmm. you know, oh, focused yeah. on helping people grow as le- as leaders yeah. and speakers. Yeah. And uh, in the group that I was a part of here in the you know the King County Puget Sound region. I was definitely the minority when it came to my worldview mm. and my perspective on truth, probably the way that I leaned in terms of my politics, the way that I leaned in terms of my understanding of uh, you know, who God is and those types of things. But we had this incredible community because we respected one another and we were able to dialogue with one another. And so for me, it was this incredible opportunity to learn from these people yeah. with different worldviews. I could see them on social media or I could hear the, the people that they listen to on the news and I could be like, oh, I can't stand those people. I don't want anything to do with them. But when you build that friendship mm-hmm. with them and you get to hear their story and understand them, you, you can then relate to where the foundation of where they're coming from. Yeah. But what's really cool is when they come to respect you, then you have a foundation to say, hey, can I share with you my worldview? Yeah. Can I share with you the foundation on which I built my life? And they say, you've been so respectful to yeah. me and letting me share mine. Sure, please do. Yeah. And it's just incredible, like the way that you know hearts can get knit together when you create that environment. And I think that... You know, John, we're we're yeah. living in this age. You know, I, I don't know exactly how old you guys are, and you don't have to say on the air. Oh, Adrian's but, got a big birthday uh, coming up. Today's my last day being 39. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> wow, welcome to the 40 Club. Yeah. Uh, yet. I have one more day. Yeah, so uh, I'm 47, you know, so I'm kind of, I feel like I'm in this bridge between yeah. the boomers and the millennials and Gen Z. Yeah. Um, and the millennials and Gen Z are growing up with a totally s- different set of values yeah. and, and understanding of truth. And the boomers, of course, are they're losing their minds because they don't know what in the world's happening in, in this culture. And so I think yeah. even in people's homes, you're seeing what I'm talking about. The families, yeah. Where, you know, the, the dad or the grandpa is saying this is the way I was raised and this is what I believe. And then the teenage kids or the, the fresh out of college kid is saying, I don't agree with anything that you say anymore. And instead of canceling one another or kind of getting into that, like, you know, toxic uh, aggression with one another, if we can really create an environment where we say, hey, we respect one another, we love each other, and we're going to try to to guide this conversation yeah. towards a place of truth. Um, I think that's really, really powerful when we can, when we can learn how to do that well. 
Yeah. You know, and as you mentioned that, I'm, I'm looking at the clock, and I'm going to be late, if not on it at all. We have Jeff Morris facilitating a One Mission Mindset Go group, which we, we they're seven weeks long, and, mm. and they're on Zoom, and, and we have companies and individuals that go through them. And it's a business professional Go group, but it's from noon to one today. And and I think about as we we started that training one to one. So I did it one to one with all our team members for years, and then we created videos, and then we people would go into modules and mm -hmm. do it themselves. And Jeff had this idea of well, why don't we do it in cohorts? Why don't we mm -hmm. do it with multiple people? And so he he did that, and it's just accelerated mm -hmm. the outcomes mm -hmm. for people. And and so you talked about a culture of respect and understanding as well as uh, you, with Toastmasters specifically. And I've been uh, I've gone a few times as a guest, um, mm -hmm. not been a long time consistent Toastmasters person. But I love to see things like mm -hmm. that. There's organizations for CEOs, you know, Vistage, mm -hmm. things like mm -hmm. that, where I can I can see like wh where is the value in people coming together and solving uh, issues, et cetera, but a powerful format that's consistent. I think about, I mean, mm -hmm. the Catholic church is pretty consistent. If you mm -hmm. go to mass anywhere in the world, right. Pretty consistent. Right. Language might be different, but yeah. it's pretty consistent. Yeah. Right. And so my question would be, um, with Toastmasters and currently impact players, what were some of those recipes of the format that provides this conduit for those conversations. Cause we had two, mm. we saw this live and about six months ago, two totally different worldviews in a, in one MM cohort. And then he, it's funny today is squad goals. So Jeff's going to be partnering up accountability mm. partners in the mm. group. And we partnered them up mm. and we wanted to see what would occur. And you know what happened is they, they first, it was like Mahatma Gandhi. First they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win. Like first they ignored each yeah. other, then they kind of laughed at each other's views, and then they kind of got into it a little bit. But then right. they had this mutual respect because they're going through this common process, mm -hmm. this common training, mm -hmm. and they totally both grew mm. in their conversation that they had. And I was nervous. They're like, we're going to talk. We're just going to talk it out. And they, I don't know how long they talked mm. on Zoom or FaceTime. One's in Idaho, one's in... in uh, on an island, in Vashon Island, right? And so you can figure out who you are if you're listening. Um, <laughs> but they had a good conversation, and they yeah. came to a mutual understanding, mm. uh, and they both feel like they were heard. So mm. what are you doing with Impact Players that provides that specifically mm. in terms of the format? Because Toastmasters is a great format. Right. You know exactly what you're right. going to get. Yeah, yeah. So our format with the cohorts, and you know, just to kind of give you a quick summary, Impact players, the way that we are organized right now is very simple. We have a large group gathering that we do once a month that is our impact breakfast, and we'll have anywhere from 100 to up to 200 guys coming together. They listen to a speaker. They have a little bit of conversation around the table. But for the most part, it's an opportunity for them to get introduced to who impact players is and what we're about. The cohorts is what we call the development engine of our organization and every good organization needs to have a de development engine that's the thing that helps us train men to accomplish the mission that we have as an organization which is inspiring men to be great husbands fathers and leaders mm -hmm. and then out of that those cohorts we identify we raise up and we send out leaders mm -hmm. and so that's kind of the bottom of the funnel and the the health and the success of any cohort is really going to be dependent on how well we've done in identifying, raising up, sending out the leaders. Yeah. The yeah. leader, you know, one thing we talk about all the time with our men is that you can either be a thermometer or a thermostat. Mm -hmm. And we want men to be thermostats. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We want them to set the temperature mm -hmm. in their home, in their marriage, in their workplace and in their cohort. So this is an opportunity to learn, how do I do that? So what is the temperature? We want it to be warm, we want it to be inviting, we wanna have that authenticity and humility that we've talked about. But the way that we break down a typical cohort is we have three phases to it. The guys come in and we've asked them to memorize a short but power-packed scripture verse. We call it our SMB, 
scripture memory verse. Um, we challenge guys to step up to this because for most guys, it's unfamiliar and difficult. But yep. doing hard things is a part of the process of becoming an impact player. So we challenge them to, to memorize the scripture memory verse. We give them a chapter of scripture to read, and we ask them to pull out from that a verse that stands out to them called their best verse. So just what's one thing as you read this chapter of scripture that relates to the topic of the day that will give you an opportunity to think deeper or be challenged as a man, husband, father, leader. And then we have the content. And the content is all about trying to take the principles and the, the truths that we're trying to implement and really say, how do we figure out how to do this in our everyday lives? So it is content that's geared towards conversation. And there's something about the way that we've been able to string those three things together right. that they build off of each other. They kind of create a flywheel effect of momentum in men's lives. And that it leaves them always wanting more, always yeah. wanting to, to go deeper. They feel like they're tied to something that's yeah. bigger than themselves. <coughs> and now they want to go home and live that out and pass pass on a lot of the things that they're learning to their wives and kids, which is super cool for me. I love it every time men come up to me and they say, you know what, this material that we're going through, I've been talking with my wife about it. And she's like, man, this is amazing. You don't ever need to miss an impact cohort because yeah. you're a better man. You're a better husband because of what you're, go you're, you're going through right now. Yeah. Are you going? Yeah. 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 Are you <laughs> going this week? That's, That's awesome. That. What, um, what's the story that has been a big impact on your life? Either something that you have had great impact from or yeah. a story of someone else that then has impacted you because you've heard it. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, so I'll just share that for me, I mentioned that I got introduced to impact a few years ago by attending the breakfast. Um, but I was working in a different ministry role altogether. In 2020, a few months into the pandemic, I was working for another local nonprofit in the area and because of the, just the fears of the unknown, the organization decided that they were going to cut the budget by 20% and they let me go. And that was the first time I'd ever been, you know, let go from a job. And certainly in the middle of the pandemic, it was a little bit disorienting to go, okay, what do we do now? Yeah. And as I was leaving that meeting where I had been let go, I called my wife and we talked for about 30 minutes and then I just stayed on the road and I called five other men hmm. and I just reached out to them and I said, Hey, this is what happened. This is what I'm going through or experiencing. Will you pray for me? And out of that, Matt Wimmer, who founded impact players, he was one of those five men that I called and he called me back the next day and said, would you pray about becoming the first executive director of Impact Players? Mm -hmm. Now, the story or the, the nugget that I want to draw from that as it relates to this podcast is that I had five men mm -hmm. yeah. that I could call. And most, mm -hmm. most men do not have that kind of a support system in their lives. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it doesn't happen organically. Right. Mm -hmm. It has to happen intentionally. Yeah. And so what we're trying to communicate to men is don't wait until you find yourself in a moment of crisis to look around and say, oh, crap, I don't have anybody to help me through this. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times I re reach, I talk to men and they go, oh, well, my wife is my best friend. I say, that's great. But here's the deal. What happens if things aren't going well with you and your wife? then who do you talk to? Then where do you go? I'm too busy. I've got my career. I've got my kids. I've got, you know, all my hobbies. But if you don't make that time to be intentional, to build that yeah. band of brothers, that cadre, that squad, yeah. you know, David called them his mighty men. Yeah. If you don't have a, a group of mighty men in your life, there will be a point where you'll hit a crisis and you're going to really be struggling to know what to do or where to go without that kind of a group. And so I'm, I'm grateful that I had that and I wouldn't be where I am today if it weren't for that. So that to me, I feel like I'm kind of a living example of why impact is so important and necessary. That's awesome. That's beautiful. I think um, 
Yeah, that element of connection is definitely that. missing. Trying to find a short, short. What do you call it? SMV? Scripture, uh, scripture, scripture memory verse. verse yeah. I'm trying to find okay. one here before we finish. Go ahead, Adrian. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that element of connection I think is definitely yeah. missing. In and I don't know if it's because we are so digital mm. of why we have less. Right, in like we've got like ten thousand friends on social media, and then we're like, I don't know who to talk who to, to talk. about this. <laughs> so I think that's that's really the the deal. Mm-hmm. And um, a lot of women are struggling too. Mm-hmm. Women typically are more natural at sharing life with mm-hmm. one another, but I know that there are a lot of women that are struggling. Uh, but men are renowned for you know, being isolated. Mm -hmm. In fact, um, there was a study that came out before the pandemic. So whatever study comes out before the pandemic, just, you know, take the statistics (laughs) (laughs) up even higher. But before the pandemic, Generation Z was uh, shown to be the loneliest generation in the history of the world. Mm -hmm. So those are like, you know, anybody under the age of like 21 Mm -hmm. is the loneliest generation in the history of the world. Then I did some more research. Men between the ages of 35 and 55 Mm. are more lonely than Generation Z. Hmm. So there is a major, in fact, the Surgeon General just a few days ago Hmm. announced he called loneliness a national epidemic. Hmm. Hmm. He said, we've got to treat loneliness the same way that we tra- we treated drug addiction mm-hmm. and other major diseases over the last 30 or 40 years, that's what lonely li- loneliness is now. And even the Surgeon General is saying we've got to tackle this. Mm. And if we don't do it uh, on a personal level and with organizations like Impact Players, uh, we're going to continue to see things like anxiety, depression, suicide yeah. continue to skyrocket. Well, I will tell you, uh, it's it's interesting that he mentions that and that that came out. You know, it, it was kind of like when we met, and I heard your heart, I go, man, this is, this is so needed. Mm-hmm. When we met with a team uh, of people before we launched, you know, Love the Process mm-hmm. as, as an idea or, or One Mission Mindset as a training or, or anything, we try to figure out what's the problem we want to, to work on, yeah. right? You got to know what the problem is. So mm-hmm. pro- just like you said, we want to help raise great fathers, sons, and leaders, men mm. to be great fathers, sons, and leaders. Mm. The, the flip side of that is that, that we're not, you know, that we don't right. have a, a, a venue to do that. So that's the problem that you consistently have worked on. We said we want to uh, help eliminate unnecessary human suffering. Mm. Like that was our big idea. Yeah. And I go, man, beautiful. this is going to be hard. And I'll <laughs> tell you, it has yeah. been. It has yeah. been. And, and so... The verse I was going to say, and then I want to ask, you know, you how in this work, how we can support you, but also how people, Mm. um, you know, just the process of doing the work you're doing is Mm. difficult. No matter the squad goals, we call it right. Week four. It's funny. The week four right now, as we speak, there's a cohort going over squad goals. I love And and that's That's week four. But we go with the inside out. Right. Intentional connection. Yeah. Intentional connection and Mm. accountability. And who is that for you? So we call that squad goals, mm-hmm. which is a play to some of the language and mm-hmm. in trying to reinforce the idea. But, and you've had a lot of great, I mean, I've taken a lot of notes. Dev McCourtney gave this speech before mm-hmm. Super Bowl uh, against the, and I know there's some Seattle Seahawks fans that <laughs> I'm going to turn off with the New England That's Patriot painful, safety. Yeah. Uh, but it was the Super Bowl against the LA Rams, actually. Mm-hmm. And and he's the captain of the team. And, and so he said, uh, I was reading the Bible last night. This is right before the Super Bowl kicks off. Mm. They give up two field goals in the Super Bowl, by the way. Mm. And they beat – Jared Goff was running the number two offense in the league up to that point. Mm. They were unstoppable almost. A lot like when the Seattle Seahawks shut down Peyton Manning. If anybody right. thinks Russell won the Super Bowl, it was actually the LOB. I was there. Exactly. Okay? Yeah. So um, – and I love – you know, long live Russ and good for him. And yeah. I, I felt good about the Kraken when I saw him and Sierra in the suite wearing avalanche gear I saw that in too. Game 7. Yeah. I felt good about our, <laughs> yeah. our, our chances, and we got it done. But Russ will be back. But two are better than one. Ecclesiastes 9. Yes. Two so are better good. than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Mm. Ecclesiastes 4, 9, and 10. And, and McCourtney 
said that verse, you know, mm. dominate on three, boom. And it was like, you know, it was like, and you can watch it and you just go, I'd be interested to see how that worked out. Oh, mm -hmm. it worked out. They 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 kept them out mm -hmm. of the end zone. Yeah, for the entire game. Matter of fact, yeah. this Bothell kid, Johnny Hecker, shit, darn near won the MVP because yeah. he was he he set the Super Bowl record. Kid out of Bothell, Super right. Bowl record for the longest yeah. putt still still in Super Bowl history. Come on, and then he finally did win a Super Bowl. Yeah, you were imagining him mentioning you in the the the. Post game speech, right? <laughs> and, then, and then I just want to thank John File. I couldn't be here without him. You know, you know, it's you know, it's great. You know, uh, they beat the Seattle Seahawks yeah. in a game uh, in a game at home at CenturyLink in the first round of the playoffs. If anybody mm -hmm. remembers this game, we lost thirty to twenty. I want to say Johnny Hecker did his diligence and he took off his Rams jersey and he put on a Bothell Cougars jersey oh, that says awesome. one and zero. Oh, and he says on his Instagram, he goes. If you know, you know, and <laughs> one to know mentality, one to know mentality. Awesome. And so, but the ideas that you are, they're going to face resistance, right? I mean, a challenge right. is truth. When you're bringing something mm. that empowers the masses, yeah, empowers people, the hope to the hopeless, mm. the annals of history mm. are that you will face pain. You will face resistance. Yeah. What does that look like for you and this work? And, and, you know, what are the needs I mean, you're seeing great favor too, yeah. no question. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure there hasn't been all easy and well. I love that piece of cake. that verse that you shared that Devin McCourty presented to his teammates. There's a verse right after that, and it's a part of this whole idea. And it says, uh, "A cord of three strands mm. is not easily broken." Mm. And I think there's a beautiful picture for uh, for us in this, especially whether it's me and my wife, me and my family. But let's take marriage. Yeah. Me and my wife, when we have the third strand yeah. of God intertwined mm. in our lives, that God is uh, a part of every aspect of our marriage, mm. of our finances, of our family, the way that we spend our time, the way that we dictate our, our truth and, and the, the values that we live by. When you can learn how to intertwine God into every aspect of life. Yeah. Your marriage, your family, your career, your worldview is not easily broken. Mm. Yeah. Um, and so I think that's a great, great picture for us. Yeah. But that, that applies, you know, for how we do everything in life. Right. Like if you can learn how to intertwine God into your business or into your nonprofit or your church or whatever that might be, your football team. Yeah whatever that might be. I mean, by the way, there are some, str um, some of the best coaches yeah. in the world today are strong believers in, in God. Yeah. And they're using that to help create the culture for their team. You know that well. Yep. Um, but you know, what, what, you know, what are we trying to do? What, you know, where do we, where are we going from here? Um, you know, we really believe that what we have stumbled upon and I don't think that I'm a genius that figured this out. We really, God kind of just led us down this path and we've stumbled on it. But we really think that what we're doing has tremendous significance and meaning in the lives of men. And uh, we want to be able to take these resources and make them available to men all over the country. Yeah. And so we're in the process of taking you know, the over 15 cohort curriculums that we've written yeah. and creating those to be more accessible online. When and he then, says we, mostly more. I mean, uh, you, well, right, right? You, wrote, you wrote the least entrepreneurship. Yeah, one, I mean, right? I, it was awesome. I've written He's, the curriculums, but yeah. it's, it takes a team. No, to put no, them I hear you. But you've done a great job. Online. That's what I, I would say. I know yeah. those, those take time. And, and when yeah. I've gone through the cohorts, it's, you know, one thing so often is when there's a plan, right? You have a plan mm -hmm. of attack when you go yeah. to an impact players cohort. Yeah, and I think that it, guys like that. Right. You know. You know what you're right. gonna get. Yeah. Each week. You yeah. don't have to. You don't have to. Because the hard part is, and the same thing's true with one of them. Some agree online, but is you have trying to create the wheel mm -hmm. every week as a leader when you're yeah. trying to equip the leader is a challenge. But it's yeah. a lot easier to handle leader playbook, and yeah. and let them invite guys, right, and bring guys alongside. So yeah. so, but you you. That you well, have thank you. Yeah, thank well. you. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think, you know, every single day across yeah. our country, 
there are literally thousands of men. You can see the Google analytics on this. Thousands of men across the country that are typing in questions to Google like, how do I be a better husband? Right. Uh, how can I be a better man? How can I save my marriage? And wow. Google's going to take them somewhere. Wow. We want to take... We want Google to take them to us yeah. and to say, hey, we've got timeless truth paired with uh, updated methods that will provide the, not only the content, but the conversation mm -hmm. mm. so that men can really get the help that they need and find the community that they're really longing for, the yeah. band of brothers yeah. that they've yeah. been seeking for a long time, and move men from isolation into community uh, and so for us, we're trying to raise the funds to do that. We're trying to build the infrastructure. We're trying to hire new staff to create that type of um, momentum to be able to create that, not only for the men here in the Puget Sound, which are obviously our chief yeah. uh, target right now, but to, to make it available to anybody that's looking for that wherever they might be. It's awesome. I'm all in. I mean, I, I've taken a lot of notes. <laughs> I mean, I, when I was, I mean, Warren, like you are a wealth of truth, right? Like, it, it, and so I hope when people listen to this podcast, they might listen to it again and listen to some of the things that Warren is saying and, it, and, and find, look at the gaps that may exist in your world. And then also look to see how you, if, if you're a man listening to this podcast, I had a kid call me uh, out of the blue uh, from Tri-Cities, Jonathan, mm. eighth grade. So you're talking 14, 14 years old. Mm on the back end of a podcast called 1440, which was about oh, time yeah. management. Mm. And he said, and he called, and my cell phone, I think, was in the show notes at that time. And so he, he calls my cell on a Friday mm. night. He said, I've been listening to your podcast. Wow. And first of all, I go, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> right? So he's in that isolation, that <laughs> loneliness. You. He somehow yeah. finds Love the Process podcast, yeah. and he's listening to it. But he says, I, I just want to know if I could ask you a question. I'm like, Go ahead, Jonathan. First of all, that's awesome that you're listening. Yeah, yeah go ahead. I think I might be playing too much Fortnite. Oh, that's okay. what he says. Yeah. He says, he goes, I think I might be playing too much Fortnite. I go, Jonathan, man, I go, by virtue of you calling me to ask, you probably are, right? So I'm right. just going to cut you to the <laughs> right. answer. Yeah. But I thought to myself, how the need is for excess. I yes. think the challenge so often is, oh, that's great what you guys are up to. Oh, that's great what's happening. But how can I access? How can I? How can I be a part of it? Mm -hmm. How can I get involved? How can yeah. I? You know? How can I get some of these answers like you just said? And so I'm, I wrote down Impact Ad, you know, players being at the top of Google AdWords for some of the searches. That would be right. phenomenal. Yeah. Because I know, yeah. I know what's, I know it's, I know mm -hmm. it's winning. I know it's working. I know yeah. it's moving guys forward. There's a lot of other spaces where. I, I can be questioning them, and they mm -hmm. don't like it much because there's usually a lot of money involved, right, mm -hmm. in some of these things, right? Every other ad, it seems like on TV is about a drug, right? Every other ad like, That's for sure. Uh, yeah. This drug or that drug or this drug or that drug, and, and we're not giving them away last time mm -hmm. I checked, okay? No. Uh, when we go to that Impact Players breakfast, you know, you know what the charge is for breakfast last time I checked? Yeah. It's like, just go ahead and eat something. Anybody yeah. come on, if you, you just show up, right? And, and, and I promise you, there's a space at the table, you right. know, and you're going to make more tables is what right. I'm hearing. You're going to make more space for more mm -hmm. men. So I'm just, yeah, I'm encouraged. Okay, so as, like, as part of that, if someone's listening and they right. want to get connected, right. how right. do they get connected? Yeah, yeah, very simple, impactplayers.org. That's how you can find us online. Uh, we do a monthly breakfast. It's a great way just to be introduced to a bunch of guys and to get a a feel for the vibe you know when you come to the breakfast you realize okay this is not this is not a corporate meeting this is not a church meeting this is more like a healthy locker room mm. guys are just laughing they're joking there's a lot of you know camaraderie in the room and guys are just trying to grow mm. and there's a there's a there's a growth mentality that exists in the room that guys find really compelling and then we'd love to get you plugged into one of these cohorts. They're meeting all over the city. We've got them, uh, you know, almost every day of the week, morning, lunchtime. Just find one that you can get plugged into. Mm. Uh, take a chance and and do something that may be, you know, a little bit audacious for you, mm -hmm. but it will pay off, and you'll be really glad you did. 
And, you know, I just want to share one other thing before we wrap up, um, because I know we're probably running past time. But just, you know, I think you said something about my wisdom or something like that. And I just, you know, I have to say that when I was young, I had uh, a speech impediment Mm. and I had a learning disability. I had dyslexia. Mm. And I would have never guessed that I would be in a position like this where I'm reading, writing, speaking, engaging with people in that way. And even in my early adulthood, when I was working in the ministry sector, I used to say all the time, there are two things that I'm never going to teach or speak on, marriage or parenting. Mm. (laughs) Like I just said, like, I'm never going to do that because I feel like those are the two areas that... It's totally obvious if you do not know what you're talking about because all you have to do <laughs> is look at your wife's expression on your face and you're talking and watch your kids as they're running around going bonkers in the back of the room. Um, and so I've just learned that, uh, number one, God has a sense of humor. Yeah. You know, And so the one thing you tell God you won't do, yeah. be careful. That may be the one thing you end up spending your life doing. But it's also just a testimony to the fact that I don't ever want anybody to think that I think I'm smarter than anybody else. Mm. We're like, we are totally figuring this out uh, as a family, as a couple. Mm. You know, I I just drove my daughter back from Phoenix, Arizona, graduating from college at 20 years old. Mm. And we spent three days in the car together. And there were some incredibly powerful moments of sharing and, and bonding. There were moments where we ticked each other off. There were moments where we went, you know, an hour without saying anything, but just listening to music and trying to kind of figure out how to process. Yeah. And so I just share all that to say, you know, don't judge by the, the shiny social media picture. Yeah. You know, just realize, hey, we're all a work in progress and you are welcome no matter where your family or your marriage or your career might, might be. Yeah. Just come in and be real. And you're going to be blessed and, and you're not, you're going to realize you're not alone in, in some of the things you may be struggling with. And that same chance that you took when yeah. Matt called to, to go into this, yeah. you're, you're not asking people to do something you didn't do. Right. I mean, Absolutely. The, the opportunity to come to be involved with impactplayers.org, you know, and go to a breakfast and meet some of these guys uh, and, and hear their stories and sit around the table and be encouraged, guaranteed. Yeah you will leave encouraged. Um, just take, take that, take that same risk. And that, yeah. that's what I think is so good about what you're saying is that mm. um, none of us, you know, knew or know exactly how it's going to go. Mm. But when we take that risk and, and we take a chance to do something that's going to potentially further our yeah. family's lives, right. Us to be better fathers, husbands and leaders. What an idea. Right. S- so needed on a call just here you know with a coach coaches are getting killed mm. teachers are getting killed parents are just putting their kids on to teachers and mm. coaches like, you take them yeah. and like i pay taxes you handle it right and so uh, it's very difficult it's a very mm. difficult time to be in education i think um mm. because of that and yeah. and the core issue you're working on part of the core right. issue is yeah is that that's the number one statistic mm. that causes a lot of things that yeah. people are very concerned about in our country is fatherlessness. Mm-hmm. So you're working on a common denominator yeah. to bring hope and healing right. to, to these places. So yeah. thank you. Think, yeah. yeah. And I think parents don't always know what to do. Right. So uh, absolutely. So they hope the teachers and coaches do. And I think yeah. there's a, you yeah. know, we, there's a lot of backlash right That's now true. towards masculinity we won't go mm-hmm. down that whole road, but things like toxic masculinity. But what we want guys to understand is there is a big difference between bravado, which is usually a lot of bluster that's not built on anything real, right. and true bravery. Right. True. And true bravery is being willing to stand up for what is right, mm-hmm. to stand up for your marriage, to stand up for your kids, and to step in yeah. to an environment where you might have to be more vulnerable than you're accustomed to. That's what real bravery is, right? And that's what an impact player is—is is yeah. somebody who's willing to to be put in the game 
and to really make a difference in, and that changes the game. Adrian's grandpa would call that gumption. 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 <laughs> Amen. Say that he, yeah. he, the worst thing you could hear is yeah. that that guy lacks gumption. Right. Right. That's the worst thing you could hear because that's yeah. ex- he's he's talking about the opposite of yeah. that. The, the courage. Um, yeah. And so that's that's very good. And I think it's so important to not lose sight of, of those thoughts. That's awesome. Yeah. So if you yeah. have if you're a listener and you have a man in your life, you should encourage them to check this out, because I think I've learned that men don't necessarily tell you that they're lonely, but they probably right. are. No matter yeah. what your faith or world background or view is, too. Yeah. I, I, I really there's it's, it's a, a safe space. It is. It's a safe space. Um, for any faith or, or background of, of, mm-hmm. of men. Yeah. Okay. So one last question and then we're going to wrap up. If you have one thing you want our audience to know, what would it be? Mm. Well, we've already mentioned it, but I would want our audience to know, and especially the men that might be listening, you're not alone. Mm. I just can't say that enough. Mm. You are not alone. Uh, and, there are people that want to help you and care for you and support you and strengthen you. When you can, when you can stand in a position of strength, um, knowing that you're not alone, that will change your marriage. It'll change your family. It'll change everything about who you are. So you're, you're, you're loved and you're not alone. It's awesome. That's awesome. Thanks for being with us today. Yeah, thank you. It was awesome to be with you guys. Let's go. Let's Let's go. go. (laughs) Hey, thanks so much for listening to the Love the Process podcast. I want to tell you a little bit about the Steen, the Teen Storytellers Project, TSP. Uh, They help teens build their filmmaking and photography talents. Definitely check them out. You can check them out on Instagram at Teen Storytellers Project or TeenStorytellers.org. Thanks for listening. Thanks, Warren. Please Thank you guys. share this with was your awesome. friends. Yeah, share, like, subscribe, like, subscribe. get impactplayers.org. Smash that Let's subscribe go. button. Let's go. Thanks so much for listening to the Love the Process podcast. You can find us on iTunes, Spotify, and YouTube. It means so much when you leave us a review and share with your friends. Thanks. Bye.